to call your attention to the scripture that is written in the book of Luke. You're familiar with it, chapter 17. And I shall begin to lift into your hearing verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who was lepers, who stood afar off. And they, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So, when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so, as they was that they went, they was healed. And the one of them, when he saw he was healed, returned with and with a loud voice glorified God. I, I simply want to tag the, this particular text. With the thought. Be grateful. And be thankful. Be grateful. And be thankful. Considering the text today, then, I thought about a time in life where I once had a rock wallower named Sweetie. Sweetie was a good old dog. Yes, Sweetie was. I was fond of Sweetie. Sweetie was fond of me and the family. One day, Sweetie got hurt. Sweetie crossed the road when Sweetie wasn't supposed to cross the road, hit by a car. And in your car, you if somebody hit you in the back, you would say the rear of the car, the rear end was tore up. Sweetie's hind legs was just tore up. Debating what we're going to do, whether we're now going to put Sweetie to sleep or we're going to take her to the vet. We took her to the vet. We had pins and hinges attached to her hips, her limbs. For a few days, Sweetie stayed with the veterinarian. We called, we went, we checked. It's touch and go, but Sweetie made it. It's time now to pick up Sweetie. We picked her up, brought home, brought Sweetie home, and Sweetie lived in the same house that we lived in. Sweetie had it going on, and through the grace of God, we were able to nurse Sweetie back to health much as it could so because so the veterinarian told us that sweetie due to the uh, the severity of this particular accident had about two to three years left to her life so we made it as comfortable for sweetie as we could 
sweetie was housebroken when she needed to go to the bathroom, she would come, take her nose, limp to my bedroom, take her nose and nudge me, and let her out, and then she, when she was ready to come back in, she was hard to do it to come back in, sweetie. Never done any doggone things in the house. Sweetie was nurtured back to as much health as she could be. When she got her health and her ability back, she ran as normal, she played as normal, she done dog things as normal. So infatuated that one day I cooked Sweetie a whole ball ham, picnic ham. Really, a whole one. And when the ham was done and had cooled down, put it on the dog plate, took the plate to Sweetie. Sweetie looked at me, smelled the ham, and began to eat. I may show that water and was there for her to drink, and she did so. But something unusual happened that had never happened be before between Sweetie and I. I left Sweetie eating, went into the house, watched TV for a while, came back out about two or three hours later, and I noticed that Sweetie had not left her hand, she laid right there by that hand. So I go over to where the dog plate was placed, and I go to reach down, and Sweetie growled at me. I said, uh-huh. She growled at me. She looked at the hand. She looked up at me and growled. Now, mind you, this is a rock wallower, and I'm very cautious now. I'm saying, wait a minute, something is not going right. I waited for a few. I reached down again. Sweetie growled again. I said, okay, sweetie, have your hand, but you can be assured that I will never bake you a ham again. Yeah. So the irony of the story is, is that whatever someone does for you that's good, what's nice, whenever somebody blesses you with something that you need or just being kind, be grateful, and it is no harm to tell them thank you. I don't, I don't know about you, but before we left home when I was a child, before we left home, the instructions from the parents was always, if somebody do something kind, respond with thank you. I, 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 yeah, I've taken that to heart. Even today because I realize that nobody has to do anything nice for you. People don't have to be kind to you. Am I right? People don't have to be nice to you. And when they do, we ought to respond with an attitude of gratitude and with a heart of thanksgiving. I thought about this, and I look at the scenario that we are in today. I look at us who are here. I look at us who are in our community. We have become so comfortable that we just do what everybody else do. We know that the virus have 
smothered itself out, but believe me, this thing is not gone. It is not. I take my mask, I wear my mask where I go, and I see more people without the mask than I do with the mask. That's their, that's their thing. Do what you want to do. But as for me, I will continue to do this mask thing until I know that I'm sure that it's enough. And every day of my life, I thank God because what was it, 16 months ago, the building was shut down. We would not be able to go in the building next Sunday. People were jumping through, hoop, through hoops wondering what we're going to do and how we're going to make it. And even in this time of turmoil and trouble, God saw fit that we would be okay. Am I right? I'm not going to abuse the privilege because the privilege is too great. And oftentimes we ask the question, how do we abuse grace? Just look at it. People are concerned now about how they feel, what they do how they do what they do, and then more so than what has happened and what will happen. Because after this, if we don't learn anything from this, there's going to be something else that try us again. To see do we trust God again, to see where your faith in God is again. And just because the world say it's all right, doesn't mean that it's all right. We still have to do what is necessary. When I look at this text, then, it reminds me of all that I previously said, uh, not, not, not to hold you, uh, but when I look at this text, it's amazing to me that when we study or when we look and when we dove into this text, we see similarities to what is happening today. When we look at Israel, time and time and time again, history tells us that history tells us that Israel got in trouble not because they wasn't children of God, but simply because they did not obey the principles of God. See, you can know God and, and not do his principle, and God will walk by your house one day and bless you, but you can't keep your blessing because you're not walking in accordance to his command. It's not that God doesn't want us to want to bless us, but 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 sometimes we take God for granted. He's going to do it. He will do it and yes he will. But in order to keep it, we have to walk according to principle. And the principle is choose you this day. It's set before you. Life and death, you choose. And so we have a choice. We have a choice. Making that choice, you, we have to sit down and really think it out. Is one day of pleasure worth a lifetime of misery? It doesn't make any sense to me. So when we find, we find Israel in trouble, Simply because they will not obey the principle. Oh, God, have mercy on us, and he does. And they go right back and do the same thing, even in a greater manner than they did before. God delivered them. What do they do? They build golden image. God delivered them. What did they do? They go to the land fulfilled with milk and honey, and what did they do? Uh, they become like... Heads that don't even know God. And, and we are like that if you really look at it today. God blesses us and we go right back and do the same thing that God has taken us out of. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes in the journey, 
we even won't even tell him thank you. <laughs> uh, Y'all don't have to say amen, but I know it's true. Why do I know it's true? Because I'm human like you. Sometimes in the journey, we won't even throw our hands up or tell somebody, look where the Lord has brought me from and look how good he has been to me. Now, now, now watch this. God takes special note of you because just like the Samaritan, Samaritan, you'll see him in a minute, we were outcasts too. You're not Jews. You're not the chosen of the chosen. But because we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have been grafted into the family of God. It is something like uh, you and I, uh, I uh, go and, and you know, and, and to the foster home or whatever, the foster place, and we adopt the child and we got all legal rights to that child. That child now has been grafted into your family. And so when we look at this, when we look at this, we find, again, I explained this a little bit last week, that... Uh, Galilee, a Judea set to the south, and Jerusalem sets in the north, and in between the both, you had this place called Samaria. Samaria would then was the outcasts, the second and distant cousins that nobody cared about. They wasn't good enough to be part of the family. So the full-blooded, they call them half-breeds. And the full-blooded, if there is a thing, Jews said, we don't have no dealings with these Sumerians. Stay away from them. And so here it is that in the middle is Samaria. On the southern tip, there's another group of people. And uh, to the north, there's another group of people. And the Galilee Sea travels that length. Now, what amazed me is that instead of taking the shortcut, if you lived in the northern end, they would jump in a boat and go around, bypass Samaria to get to another county uh -huh, or another town or another city. And likewise in the south. And here it is written in this book that Jesus is impartial to anybody. He goes straight down the middle. He goes straight downtown. That's what the book says, and that it happened as he went up. See, Jerusalem is to the north. That he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. So he goes, and there he encounters these leopards. I want to stop right here and tell you, it doesn't matter what anybody has said about you, Jesus will pass your way. If you learn how to have enough faith and patience and just wait on him, there is nothing that will impede him from coming to see about you. Do I have a witness? traveled through this village and the Bible said 10 lepers. Now, we, we, we talked enough about leprosy to understand it's a crucial disease in that time. Swelling and pus and losing of, of, of limbs and fingers and toes. All of that blindness takes place. Medically, there is no cure for it. Miraculously, there is a whole cure for it. And that is only found in God. He travels. And as he travels to this place, the ten lepers, I don't know how they knew he was there. Perhaps the crowd was saying, Jesus is passing by. And they caught wind of it because the lepers now are outcasts. They are not, in, in, they are not with the in crowd. They are outcasts. Kathy, they put on the outside. They have to eat their meals on the outside of this village. They, they can't have no contact with anybody. There, there is no meetings. 
There is no gathering for them. They are diseased. They are put out to die on the outside of this village. And sometimes we get like that. We feel people are not worthy. We feel people don't have what we have. We cast them down. We put them out. But this reminds us that doesn't matter how low a person go, God is able to raise them up. And he does so. He does so. Now listen at their cry together. Lord, listen at the cry together. Listen, church, as we cry together. Lord, have mercy not just on me, but on us. On us. On us. And he does. He says now, go, show yourself to the priest. And, and the Bible said, as they went, Leprosies begin to dry up, to dry up. Whew, what an awesome God we serve. Have you, ever, have, have, have you ever had a time in your life when you didn't know where, what tomorrow would bring? You, you, you might have been feeling bad in your body. You might have been tore up from the toe up. And you didn't know what the report is going to, what's going to be from, from the doctors. But as you journey your way, somehow God touched you. And when you got to your doctor, the report was not as bad as you thought it was going to be. <coughs> I'm telling you, be grateful and be thankful. For the Lord will make a way somehow. If we trust him. I, I'm almost done. Uh, uh, Jesus says to him, to them, the ten of them now, go your way. Go your way. And as they went, the scripture says they was healed. In the 17th chapter of Luke, you, uh, starting at verse 11, you will find this. See, obedience to God brings not only healing, but total satisfaction. You'll see that. How? You're going to see it. Through the door of faith. There, there are so many people who just want to touch. Yeah. But there's one of these ten that returns. Now, what happened to the other nine, it's not written. You can use your mind if you want, right here. But one of them, as he went, his healing began to take place, and he knew that he didn't do it by himself. He was unable. He was put out. He was knocked down. He was ostracized. He was ridiculed. But he understood where his blessing came from. And as he was going, he realized it, so he returned. He returned thanking and giving God's praise. Again, I don't know what the other nine but done, but there are times that we can see in this, in this century right here that people come to church or wherever they meet the Lord at. And the Lord lays his hands on them, blesses them, give them a new leaf on life. And as soon as they bless, they stop crying, Lord have mercy. And they start doing all, a, a lot of other things. Y'all might as well be truthful. No, I'm not saying this. I know this. My own family, there was somebody who was sick on their way out and the Lord blessed them and healed them. Sickness and death left them. Before then, we found them in the church crying, Lord have mercy. After the Lord restored health and shut the door to death, I haven't seen them from that day to this back in the church. And sometimes we are like that. 
Until the next time something happened to us, and then we cry again, Lord, have mercy on me. You, you, you better watch the, them kind of people because they just like the nine. See, they want one thing. They want what they want. They don't understand the gravity or the weight of it. They just want what they want. Watch them. Watch them because if you're not, if you're not careful... You will walk away too, just like those nine did, without being grateful and thankful. Watch them because uh, they will influence you. That it doesn't take all of that, but yes, it does. Again, anything or any time something or someone have been good and kind and, 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 and benevolent to you, we ought to take the time out to tell them Thank you. The one returned. The one returned. The one returned. One of them returned with thanksgiving and with praise. One of them. You are one of those who are here today that, that have been through the storm, but you understand where your blessings come from. You, 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 you are one of the ten who had some trouble in your life and one of the, the nine could not help you because they had the same trouble you had plus some. But God looked beyond your faults and saw your needs. Am I right? Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's gone but he returned with a loud voice. In other words, he wasn't ashamed to let somebody know that the Lord had been good to him. With a loud voice in verse eight, uh, uh, verse 15, glorified God. Now watch this. He fell down on his knees. And, 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 and that is, a, that is a, a mode or posture of submission. Not only that, it's a posture of thanksgiving. It's an acknowledgement that I'm truly grateful to you. He, 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 he fell down on his face at his feet. See, we bowed a lot of people's feet. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, child, you're right. Right about what? what? What are you right about? When the Lord can right the wrong. When the Lord can make things better. When the Lord can lift me out of this situation. What are you right about? I'm telling you, you're going to have to learn to turn our deaf ear to a lot of counsel and begin to open up the book and see what the Lord has to say about it. And he will meet you in the morning. He will meet you at noonday. He will meet you at night. He will meet you late at night if you just call on him. Be grateful to him and thank him for his goodness. Fell down at his feet. And the book. And the book says he was a Sumerian. In other words, uh, church, this person didn't look like you and me. No, I can't say, if I, if I was to equate that to now, to the now, I, I would be able to say that uh, uh, he wasn't of a Christian nature. No, uh-uh. He had no parts of this, but he knew that God was able to fix whatever he was going through. He was a Samaritan. And sometimes, believe it or not, sometimes them on the outside will give more praise to God than we that are on the inside. We should be showing them how to be thankful and grateful unto God. And yet, them that have been tombed out, thrown away, forgotten about, give more praise to the creator of life than we do. They walk, well, sometimes we walk around with our eyes and our head in the air, but that's not the posture of the Sumerian. The, the posture was bow low, being thankful and grateful and worshiping. I, I don't know about you, but have there ever been a time 
when you couldn't see your way out? Has there ever been a time that your own strength, that your own power couldn't get you out? Have there been, ever been a time uh, where your money was funny and you couldn't buy your way out? Where your friends were few and you found yourself lonely and alone? But isn't it amazing when you cry out, Lord, have mercy on me, that the God of creation and the Lord of all will pause because you have arrested his attention. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are in the back 40 or whether you're in the palace, if you cry, Lord, Jesus, have mercy on me. He will come see about you. Am I right? I said he will come see about you. And he will make it all right. And your response is to tell somebody, return back to Sharon, being thankful and with, with a gracious attitude. Return back after 16 months, praising and worshiping the Lord like you have lost your mind because the Lord has been good to all of us. Be grateful. Be thankful. Look what the Lord has done. Blow your horn right there and give God some praise. Done. I'm done. I'm done.